Here we'll learn the essentials of meningitis. To begin, start at table. Here we'll present the broad range of presentations of meningoencephalitis and provide a key example of each. For bacterial, we see acute purulent meningitis, most commonly from streptococcus pneumoniae and pneumococcal meningitis. This is the most common cause of bacterial meningitis overall. We see abscess and empyema. These are polymicrobial and occur both with bacteria and also fungi. Chronic bacterial meningitis, which is often due to tuberculosis. We see that it causes a basal or meningitis. Viral, we see an acute aseptic viral meningitis that's often due to enteroviruses. Encephalitis, notably HSV-1 encephalitis, herpes simplex type 1. This is an important, actually treatable cause of viral encephalitis. And arthropod-borne, West Nile virus is an important example of this. For a fungal, we see chronic meningitis. There's many which are endemic to various geographic areas, such as histoplasmosis, which is transmitted via bird and bat excrement, vasculitis meningitis from fungi, mucormycosis is an important cause of this, especially in poorly controlled diabetics, and there's granulomatous, forming a cerebral abscesses. Cryptococcus is a key example of this. It causes a basal or meningitis, along with TB. And then there are miscellaneous causes. A protozoa, toxoplasmosis, can especially cause meningitis in the immune compromised. Metazoa, such as sister sarcosis, tapeworm, this ends up being the most common global cause of seizures due to calcifications in the brain. And prion disease, which leads to Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, a neurodegenerative condition. Now let's review the anatomy of the intracranial meninges and then the pattern of the different meningoencephalitides. The meninges comprise three separate layers and form three separate spaces. Draw a coronal section of the brain, then the dura mater, the outer layer, the arachnoid mater, the middle layer, and the pia mater, the inner layer, which covers the nervous system parenchyma. Next draw the meningeal spaces, the epidural space, Specify that no true space exists in the cranium, but it does in the spinal canal. Then the subdural space. Then the subarachnoid space. Show that pachy meninges refers to the dura mater. Then that lepto meninges refers to the combined arachnoid and pia mater. This is an important anatomical distinction. Intracranial hypotension, for example, will cause pachy meningeal enhancement on MRI whereas infectious meningitis causes leptomeningeal enhancement. The meningitis really refers to the leptomeninges. Now let's go from top to bottom and address key patterns of meningoencephalitis. Start with subdural empyema, which as mentioned is due to a broad range of organisms, thus it's referred to as polymicrobial. Importantly, lumbar puncture should be avoided in the setting of subdural empyema, due to the risk of brain herniation. Next, at the leptomeninges, indicate acute purulent bacterial meningitis. Let's run through key common causes. First, in newborns, indicate group B strep is the most common cause, whereas E. coli is the most lethal cause. And we need to remember listeria monocytogenes as another key newborn cause of meningitis. It can also cause meningitis in adults in the immune suppressed. In teens and adults, indicate streptococcus pneumoniae. Again, this is the most common cause of meningitis in adults and the most common cause overall. Neisseria meningitidis, meningococcal meningitis, the most common cause in teens and the second most common cause in adults. Next, let's jump down to cerebral abscesses. These are ring-enhancing lesions. Note that there are a variety of non-infectious causes of ring-enhancing lesions as well, most notably brain metastases. It's best to consider this class to be polymicrobial since many things can cause them, but some standout causes include toxoplasmosis, fungal infections such as cryptococcus, histoplasmosis, candidiasis, and coccidioides, and a variety of bacterial causes as well. Moving into the white matter, let's address viral leukoencephalopathies, viral causes of white matter changes. Show that HSV-1 specifically causes a viral encephalitis that affects the 
limbic areas, most easily identifiable from its mesial temporal lobe invasion, and indicate that there are many other viral pathologies that can cause a leukoencephalopathy. Next, make note of ventriculitis, also known as ependymitis. This is infectious inflammatory involvement of the ventricles, which are aligned by ependymal cells. We especially consider this in CSF shunt infection. Now, basilar meningitis at the base of the brain. Again, it can be caused by bacteria, such as TB, or fungus, such as cryptococcus. Notably, cryptococcus has a soap bubble appearance. Other causes exist, including neurosyphilis. Next, include a rhombencephalitis, which refers to a brainstem encephalitis. Various things can cause this, including listeria and various viral etiologies. Now let's address spinal meningitis. Outline the spinal canal and the spinal cord. Next, let's draw the meningeal layers of the spinal canal from inside to out. Draw the pia mater, which directly adheres to the spinal cord and nerve roots. Then draw the arachnoid mater and label the subarachnoid space. Next, draw dura mater, which forms a thick ring within the spinal canal. On one side of the diagram, draw the dural root sheath, also known as the dural root sleeve. Indicate the subdural space between the dura and arachnoid mater layers. Indicate the epidural space, which forms external to the dura mater and forms an easy space for epidural abscess to form. So first, let's address epidural abscess, which can cause spinal cord compression. Spondylodiscitis, which is infection of the vertebral body and the intervertebral disc, and paraspinal muscle abscess can invade the epidural space. Here, the epidural space is a true space, whereas in the cranial vault, a space only forms after a pathological injury or iatrogenic surgical cause. Indicate that poliomyelitis invades the anterior horn cells. In addition to polio, West Nile virus also causes this pattern of disease. And indicate that tabes dorsalis is the posterior column dorsal horn attack that occurs from neurosyphilis. Before we conclude, let's discuss cerebrospinal fluid findings, rough estimations, in the various forms of meningoencephalitis. Indicate that CSF normally contains less than 15 cells, 70% of which are usually lymphocytes. Glucose should be about 60% of the serum glucose, and protein ranges from 15 to 45. In bacterial meningitis, there's greater than 500 cells, typically greater than 1,000 even, the majority are polymorphonuclear cells, the glucose is low, protein is elevated, as it is in all infectious meningitis, and pressure is elevated as well. Note that while the glucose will reliably be low, the cell count can vary, so the actual cell count itself is an unreliable indicator. In viral meningitis, cell counts are typically less than 500. The majority of cells are usually lymphocytes, the glucose is often normal. This is a key distinguisher from fungal and TB in bacteria. In these, the glucose as mentioned is low. Note that although eventually viral meningitis should have a predominance of lymphocytes, very early on there may be a neutrophilic predominance. Finally, for fungal and TB, indicate that the cell count varies widely. It usually comprises lymphocytes. And as mentioned, importantly, the glucose is low. Although we won't go through them here, it's important to watch out for clinical and or radiographic signs of brain herniation risk before performing a lumbar puncture. This concludes our diagram.